everyone. Hello, hello. Um, I'm back, you guys. I I keep saying that I'm gonna do a video while I'm here, but um, of course, when you're in the hospital, you know you always got people coming in and out of the room, and you get interrupted a lot things like that so you really can't well I was I haven't been able to record um consistently like I want to y'all please excuse my appearance <laughs> I look crazy and maybe if I have something all over my face or my tube and then my nose is crooked or whatever the issue is it's just been a journey um and so i am trying to um get myself well again and i'm um, just and then um answer i'm just trying to give you all an update on everything that's going on the good the bad the ugly things i don't want to talk about Things that I'm disappointed about. Um, I, um, I'm sorry, y'all. I'm trying to see if somebody's walking in. But, um, the things that I really don't want to talk about, I have to talk about those things, too, because they are a part of my journey and my experience. Um, like I said, it's, it's been rough. Um, sorry, I'm trying to adjust things and move things around. But, um, oh, I'm going to have some different clips. In the video of me, me showing you guys kind of like my daily struggle or the things that I have to go through to get in and out of the house. I had, um, I, w I wasn't thinking, but I, I should have did a video with me transferring from my car to my wheelchair. Uh, I should have did that, but it's okay. Because I think I still can do that um, at some point. But let me just get right to the reason why I jumped on real quick. Um, and Because um, I don't want to keep you all too long. And I don't want this video to be monotonous. But the reason why I'm updating you all is because, um, you know, every time I go to the hospital, I do try to to do a video to let you know like where things are and just some of the current things that still happen or have been happening with me throughout my journey and my pregnancy and everything that's incurred and you know occurred physically mentally all of that you know with this pregnancy and so I recently um I had taken a little break from going to the doctors and everything only because it has become so physically hard for me to move around because of the fluid buildup that I get in my body. And um, so it's really hard to move my body around. It's hard to breathe. It's hard to walk. And I have to always do so much to prepare for an appointment. I have to get my ride together. I have to make sure that people are available to take me and um you know and then not only that I have to physically do some moving around my myself which is very intimidating and um it, it causes me to have a lot of anxiety sometimes when I think about what I what I have to do to get to my next appointment so um I really wasn't in a hurry but what ends up happening is 
I don't want to, um, I can't allow, um, my body to have too much fluid because I basically stop breathing and, um, it can damage my heart. I can have a heart attack or whatever. And then I want to make sure that the babies are okay. And, you know, obviously try to make sure I'm taking care of myself the best way I can. Um, so, what ends up happening is that I have to end up going to the hospital to get fluid drained off. Um, which is, you know, why I'm in the hospital. Or when I, when I am in the hospital, that's usually why. Um, so, recently I decided, okay, I can't give up, I can't quit, I gotta keep pushing, I gotta keep going to these doctors to try to get answers. I know a lot of people said they stopped going, they don't go. The doctors always say the same thing, that they don't see a baby, there's no baby, I'm crazy, there's, you know, there's nothing on the ultrasound that indicates that there's a baby there and all the tests are negative. Yes, that is still currently what they are saying to me too. That has not changed. That And is it disappointing to hear? Is it frustrating to hear? It is the most frustrating. Um, so it's one thing, I just don't understand it. Because when I see the ultrasound, that's, I, I don't, I don't see what they see. I see babies all the time, very clear. And what I did this time was I had my daughter with me and I had her record the girl doing the ultrasound. And then I'm going to get a copy of the actual ultrasound. And it was interesting because what we saw, it's like she had to get close to the screen to almost look at it herself. And then it's like she moved something and she moved the probe over and then what she saw uh, was no longer on the screen. And then here, click on the screen for her to take a shot of that particular place. And I'm like, why didn't you take a shot of it when you saw the image that you saw? You know, and I don't know if I'm just like being paranoid or if I'm overthinking it, or if I'm imagining all of this, but it's just really weird how you can capture all these other images, but when anything looks like an image of a face, or a fist, or a hand, or an arm, you don't you don't take a picture of that. And I just don't understand why that is such a problem. If there's a baby inside of a woman. Why is it an issue for you to take a picture of the baby? Why is it why does it always appear like the babies are being hidden or like they don't want anybody to see that something is really there? And like I said, I don't know if it's just me. I don't know if I'm imagining this or what. But it's just I don't know. It's just really, really, they just, the, the the technicians that do these ultrasounds, they seem to be so lackadaisical. They seem to be so, like, um, nonchalant, you know? And then I asked her, I said, well, the places that I need to be looked at are on my side and in my back because that's where the babies are. Oh, and she was like, well, we didn't, we didn't get an order um, for us to look in those areas, and if you, if we if we look in those areas, your doctor's going to have to write up another order for us to be able to look there. And I'm just like, my question is why you don't look everywhere? And I don't know if that's typically, um, like, maybe it's just typical when you're pregnant, to find a baby in one place, and you don't have to look everywhere. But I told them, when I say them, my doctor's office, the type of concerns that I was having, and that 
the babies didn't appear to be, you know, um, in a typical location where a normal person would be pregnant. But I, they people they don't listen. They just say okay, and I mean they hear you, but I don't know if the, if if the message gets lost by the time it gets to the doctor, or if it does, they don't care enough to listen to what you're saying about your situation. I really honestly don't know. But anywho, I don't want to keep ranting about that. So, um, I had the ultrasound done. And of course, when I went to see the doctor, she was like, no, we don't see anything. You're not pregnant. There's no baby. Blah, 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 blah. And so, you know, it's almost like you try to talk to them rationally and just be like, listen, I know that my situation is far-fetched. And I know that, you know, um, I can't um, explain everything. But this is what I'm feeling. Huh? No problem. Okay. I have your morning medication for you. Okay, no problem. I'm taking my medicine, guys. Hold on a second. Um, so, um, what was I saying? Yeah, so, you know, you try to explain the best way you can. Y'all, my braces are killing me. So, if you see my face and my, my lips moving a certain way, it's because my teeth are shifting. And it hurts so bad. But, um, so I was just trying to be reasonable. Like, look, I know what the test is saying. I know that is very rare for something like this to, um, happen. And a person still says that they're pregnant. But I said, this, the test results and what you see are opposite of what I'm feeling in my body. Is something going on, you know? So it's almost like you try to rationalize, ration with them and reason with them about what you're dealing with in your body. And it's like, if scientifically it does not add up, they don't care. They don't care. They don't care that you feel kicks and your belly is growing. What they'll do is substitute that for something else going on in your body like oh well we see you have fibroids or we see you have an enlarged liver the same things that they always see they'll try to pass it off as maybe what you're feeling is based upon the fact that you have fibroids so I was like well fibroids don't kick so anyway she pretty much was like saying you're not you know it's nothing there and I was like, well, can you at least continue to um, give me an exam, like, I, you know, every so often or look at me to see if there's any changes in my body? And she was like, well, basically, she was like, no. To be honest, she was like, if you want to go to another doctor, you know, or if you want to get another opinion, you can do that. Or basically, she was like, if you end up having a baby or they end up finding something, let me know. I stand to be corrected. But she, there was nothing further she was willing to do for me. Right? <laughs> and my dad my dad was at my appointment with me. And my father and I are very close. And we talk about everything and he knows, you know, what we were going through. And one thing I can say about my dad is that you can see the disappointment in him, too, but he told the doctor, he said, listen, my daughter is a pretty reasonable woman. My daughter doesn't have any kind of, you know, unstable issues that will cause her to come in here and tell you this is going on and, and something isn't happening. And I told the doctor, I said, everybody can tell me what I don't have, but nobody can tell me what I do have. Nobody can tell me what's going on Nobody is willing to say, let me look inside of you and see if we can see anything. You know, even down to the fibroid issue. If you see that I have fibroids, then 
I I didn't hear you say um let's fix it. I'm ready. What would you like to drink with your um pills? I uh, water, it's fine. Water? Yeah. Do you mm -hmm. want ice in the water? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Thank okay. you. Mm -hmm. Um so Yeah, so she's not she was un, she wasn't willing to do anything. Like, okay, you telling me there's no baby, but okay, so then Let's see if we can figure out why I'm having this pain. Why am I having this? And I said, did you even look at me? So you didn't look at my stomach. You didn't. Nothing. And um, I said, do you want to see it? And then so she was like, well, yeah, I mean, I can take a look. Uh, you know. So she looks up my shirt. And she goes, oh, that's, that's fluid. That's fluid. So if I would have came in there and I would have mentioned that I didn't have no fluid on me, she wouldn't have known it was fluid. It wasn't. It's my baby bump, but it's just a way for her to just get around not doing anything about it because she accused me of um, um, coming to her years ago with the same problem, like 20 years ago. I'm like, lady, I haven't seen you in a long time. The last time I saw you was 2018. Labetalol, mm -hmm. baby aspirin, and Xeroxalin. It's, it's, a rock it's the other type of diuretic. Metalazone is the other name. Right, I remember saying that. Thank you. You're welcome. <coughs> I'm sorry, guys. I'm taking my medicine. And I have... Um, Belly shot, the Lubinox, the one that prevents mm -hmm. blood clots. Did, yeah. did wound care come in? Yeah, she came in. She just um looked at everything and uh -huh. wrapped me back. I thought she made an assessment. Okay. And then I thought she was gonna come back. To come yeah, in. you can put that. You can shoot me in this side of my, right. Are you my stomach. Are you having there? Yeah. Your side is fine. Okay. I think they did that side the last time. Alrighty. So yeah, guys. Um, you want it down here this time? Yeah, that's fine. You can put it lower. It's gonna burn and sting wherever you put it at. Hold on, guys. I gotta get a shot in my stomach, real It'll quick. Stick. One, two, three. Mm -hmm. One, two, three. Mm -hmm. It'll burn. Mm -hmm. All right. Well Thanks. You're welcome. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. So, um, I'm on a water restriction, so I can only have like one small cup every few hours up until a certain time, which is hard because when they pull in all this fluid off, it makes me dehydrated. So it's like, it's, it's, yeah. And then when I eat something, I get really thirsty. But I can only, really, I choose to use, I choose ice because I feel like I can control the, the coldness in my mouth. And, um, it just, when I drink water, it's like, it goes down my throat, but it's like my mouth is dry when I drink it. So I choose the ice because it helps to, it helps my mouth not be so dry. But anyway, that's a little sidebar. But, um, um, oh, well, oh, so back to the, to the doctor. So she pretty much, um, dismissed me and, um, was like, it's nothing else she can do for me. And I guess if I wanted anything further, I would have to find that through somebody else. Which is fine, because that's what I planned on doing. Can you close the door for me? I sure will. Thank you. You're welcome. That's what I planned on doing anyway, because I really didn't like her bedside manners and the way that she was just kind of, you know, I just I just knew I wasn't going to vibe with her anyway. So it really did make a difference. Um, but like I was saying, she said what she said, and my dad kind of chimed in to vouch for me and say, yeah, well, I hear what you're saying, about what you don't see and whatever like that. And he was like, I'm her father. And I guess his presence, 
just being there was everything for me. You know, just my daddy being there, my my best friend, and, you know, just like no matter what they say, I'm going to be there for you, and I'm not going to leave your side. And that for me was... It, it it helped to really um, take away some of the the sting from just how the, the the appointment went today, you know. But the reason why I'm still choosing to go to doctors is because I, that's what I've just, that's my instructions for my journey. I see God on. And um, no matter how hard it is, if I'm praying about something and I'm seeking counsel, counsel about it and I really believe that the Lord has given me answers to something um, that I prayed about, I'm going to follow those instructions. So everybody's journey is different. You know, some people don't have the wherewithal. And when I say that, I'm not saying that like I'm better or stronger or more mentally stable when I say that. Um, I'm just saying it for different reasons. Some people don't have a wherewithal to go to doctors. Some people choose not to go. Some people are just like, you know what, I'm going to handle all of my affairs for my baby at home, which means I'm going to get a doula, which means I'm going to have an at-home birth, which means I'm making plans and arrangements to do everything at, in the privacy of my own home. So please don't, you know, misconstrue what I say when I say wherewithal. But everybody has different choices and outcomes about how they want to to birth their child or make plans for their child to come into this world. Um, and like I said, my journey is a little bit different. Um, now, am I happy about it? Y'all, mm -mm. when I tell you moving, physically moving my body around, it's one of the hardest things in my life that I've had to do these last four or five years. It's the hardest thing that I had to do to because, you know, of the pregnancy. And I can't even express to the doctor, like, the heaviness that I feel, the weight of the babies. is like carrying around a, a box of Xerox paper inside of me. I can't even tell the doctor that's what my body feels like. And even if I do, it wouldn't matter. It wouldn't matter how descriptive I was about my discomfort. They would tell me there's no baby, but they would not say, let's figure out what's wrong with you. Let's go. Let's, let's just see if we can just figure this out. See, they don't want to figure it out. They want to just tell me they don't see a baby and walk away. But they don't want to help me with everything that I've explained about, you know, the discomfort, the kicks, the moves, the whatever. And so, um, I'll be honest, I don't really know what to do with that right now. Except, except that that's just the way that the medical field is. That's the way the doctors are. Um, but as, and not every single doctor is, is, is like that. I just have to find the one that's for me. And so with that being said, God is doing something in my life that is, um, personal, obviously, with my journey and there is so much more involved in this than just having a baby. So a lot of what I'm dealing with and going through transcends and supersedes me birthing a child. It does. It's, it's, it's God is, he's pruning, he's purging me. He's, he's teaching me. He's training me. He's, He's introducing me. He's, he's showing me things about me that I need to see, that I need to understand. He's teaching me life lessons. So there's a whole lot going on in this journey 
that it's not about just birthing a child. And I and I'm really, really coming to realize that as time goes on and as I have more and more challenges. Cause when I think I can't do something, I'm gonna tell y'all something. The word of God I don't know. The word of God there's power in his name. I'll just say that. There's power in the name of Jesus. Because y'all, the things that I have to go through to get to what I need to do is some of the hardest things in my entire life that I've had to face. And I've had so many other challenges in between that that I've been combating and fighting against. And, um, no problem. Um, your doctor just put in an Ooh. order for um, those potassium pills again. Oh, the big ones. Yes, because of your lab work came back and we lose a lot of potassium in your urine. Okay. So I have replacements like we did yesterday. Okay. So I got to take two of, two of those? Yeah, but I'll break them in half for you. Okay, no problem. Oh, well, I thought, oh, the last time I took them was last night. Did you take some last night? Yeah, so he wants me to take them again today? Yeah, based on your lab work from this morning. Okay, all right. It's an important electrolyte for your heart, and your okay. heart can get irritable if your potassium level is low. Okay. So, um, just to let you know, I'm a, I'm a YouTuber, so I'm, I'm recording. Um, I don't have you on camera at all just oh, okay. your boy but I'm a YouTuber so oh, okay. yeah. Um so yeah guys I'm um <sighs> taking potassium now because of the fluid that has to be pulled from me just to make sure everything nothing goes low. I'ma hold on to that. Okay. I don't need your okay. straw. Okay. Yeah. But thank you. Can you just pour that in there? I don't have room, but I will. Okay. <laughs> you know I love my ice, right? <laughs> <laughs> Try to preserve it as much as I can. Absolutely. Thank you. I get it. So, look, so I got these big horse pills, but I have to break them up. So, that's what I have to take. So, I may pause y'all to do that because I don't know. Let's see. And they watch you take pills. <laughs> Especially this nurse. Uh-huh. I try to let it dissolve a little bit in the water. That makes it easier for me to take. We almost had 30 minutes, so once I take this, I'm going to stop this video, and then I'll start another one. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, guys. I took them all. Do you mind if I take a listen to your heart and lungs? No. Do every everything you normally do, and I I, I will be respectful to you, and I'll put you on camera. Listen, I'll listen to your heart first. Sure.
You need me to take a deep breath? Not yet. Okay. Do you think you can sit forward just a little bit? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, that's so good. Mm -hmm. Nice deep breath. Good. Thank mm. you. No problem. Okay. I'm just gonna take mm -hmm. a peek at your feet. Okay. I'm just gonna take your socks down. Okay. Here. No problem. So right now I'm just having my vitals checked and my heart checked and stuff like that. Um. Um, yeah, that's what she's doing now. Um, what else is happening? Yeah, so I'm going to end this video, um, and then we're going to come back, and I'm going to talk to you all about what my next plan of action is going to be, um, for everything that's been going on. You're doing good, Auntie. Okay, so <clears throat> this is my journey from 
my bedroom to coming downstairs into my living room. I still have another flight of steps <coughs> that I have to go down. I'm going to have my niece run over real quick and show you all a picture, I mean a clip of the next set of steps that I have to go down before I go out the door. Now I'm winded like this just walking out of my room and coming down the steps. And I'm not even down all of my steps yet. So can I go show the rest of the steps that I have to walk down? In the front door. So <clears throat> that's what I have to do next. But I'm because I'm waiting for my sister to get here to pick me up. Um, so I have to start pretty early trying to get down the steps. So what I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna have my niece probably put a chair downstairs on the foyer and I just sit by the door and wait for my sister to get here because you know, I still need to be punctual and consider everybody else's time. So we're gonna pause the video for now and we'll I'll get another clip um of me getting into the car so I'll see you in a minute and pause it.